Along the Hilliards Creek area, there were several scar trees and borer rings. One such ring existed between Como Street and Sturgeon Street. It was destroyed in the late 1960s. It was along this stretch of coastline here that the men, Pamphlet Parsons and Finnegan, eventually arrived. They had been in Sydney, they were ex-convicts, and they were sent to the Illawarra to cut timber, um, cedar I think. They got blown out to sea and eventually washed up on Morton Island. They lived with the indigenous people for a while, then transferred to Stradbroke Island, and then were assisted across here to the mainland because they thought they were south of Sydney. They thought Sydney was to the north of here. I actually played the role of Thomas Pamphlet in an episode of The Great Southeast on Channel 7. I was also the associate producer of this episode. Eventually made it to Bribey Island where they were rescued by Oxley, who was charting several possible locations along the coast for a new penal settlement. Boy, were they lost. Um, Oxley found them and uh, informed them that they were actually about a thousand kilometres north of Sydney. And uh, they returned to Sydney. Beautiful little spot here, down on Sleeth Street. If you're in the area, come and have a look. Well worth a visit. I'm here in Felmunger Park, and it's called Felmunger Park because there was a Felmungery here. I always thought it was something to do with trees, but it isn't. It's about the processing of hides and skins. And right here behind me, this was some sort of manufacturing site. This was an industrial area dating from 1853, and there's more remains to be found over that way as well. So these, these um, wooden fences here, these timber posts, mark out the areas where buildings once were. So if I go through here, just squeeze through here, there'd be more under this bit of ground as well, but nothing's above ground here. So you can imagine this back in the mid 19th century, there was a lot of scouring and waste and the smells from here would have been pretty bad. That was a ow, bug. And uh, yeah, it would have smelled pretty bad here. And all of the waste was just thrown into the Hilliards Creek, which is just over there. It was Thomas Blackett Stevens who set up the Felmungary. The brick foundations, however, probably date from at least 1894, when a guy called Alford took over the place. Quacky slime ducks. Ooh. Louis Hope was born in 1817 in Ormiston House in Haddingtonshire, Scotland. He came to Moreton Bay in 1848 with his wife, whom he married in Sydney. The first building on the site was the Slab Hut, most likely built in 1858. The larger Brick House was begun in 1862, with further extensions being completed over the next few years. Owen oh, had also had one of the first septic toilets in Queensland. In addition to Ormiston House, Louis Hope had property at Coomera and at Kilcoy. His home at Kilcoy looks remarkably similar to his house at Ormiston. He also served for 20 years in the Queensland Legislative Council. In fact, the Queensland Legislative Council was like the village bicycle. Everyone had a ride. Ormiston House. I asked the staff about photography if it's permitted here and they said no. But they didn't say anything about video. The first commercially produced sugar in Australia was made at Ormiston and for a time Hope's Ormiston sugar processing factory was the largest in Queensland. 
However, things eventually soured. Following protracted litigation with a neighbour who claimed that Hope had reneged on a promise to crush his cane, Hope threw a tantrum and vowed to never again crush a stick of cane, after which he dismantled the mill and sold his Ormiston property in 1875. He left for England in 1882, never to return. Just arriving at St Andrew's Anglican Church here on Wellington Street. This dates from about 1868 and was put up by Lewis Hope. This was a private chapel for him and his family. And it's still in the same spot. It hasn't been moved around or adapted or anything. It still is pretty much the church from 1868. It's around the side here. There's some windows. Oh, this one's got a little bit of stained glass happening. Can just see inside a little bit. I can't? No, I can't see the altar. It's too dark. I can see the pews. Hmm. And I can see one stained glass window on that side at the rear of the church. And oops, what do we got on the other side? Yes, there's another. You see that one there? There's a, there's a little stained glass window up there as well. And here, there is a church hall, Catherine Gray Hall. I'm at the northern end of Ormiston, that's Stephen's place just over there. And this area here, this is really cool. See this big open area behind me? This used to be a road, this was Wharf Street. It was put through here by Lewis Hope as um, a way to get his produce from his sugarcane and other agricultural businesses out onto Hilliards Creek, out into Moreton Bay and up to Brisbane. So this was an actual road. This was a place of uh, wagons and produce and, and people back and forth. Little playground over there. And you just go around the corner here. And over there is where the wharf used to be. That's Hilliards Creek just behind me there. And just here, you can see these big old logs. There's a lot of midges here. This is the remains of a wharf where Lewis Hope would, his goods and sugar cane and things would be brought up here and, uh, and shipped out into Moreton Bay and uh, no doubt up to Brisbane. This is all that's left of it. I've got a photograph showing some kids sitting on these logs. As you can see, they were uh, much more up in the air back then. They've now sunk down into the, into the ground a bit more. And just over here, there's some bricks and uh, bits of cement. I'm guessing they were part of the old wharf infrastructure here. And while I'm up here at the northern end of Ormiston, the stretch of creek here is actually artificially made. The creek goes around that way, loops all the way around. But someone at some point in the past hand dug a very narrow channel coming through here we don't really know why i guess it was just to help boats get around this bit of land here quicker rather than doing that huge loop around there but it was only a very very narrow little channel over time as the waters come in and out it's made it wider and now it looks like a a natural bit of bit of stream there bit of creek but it isn't that's the man-made cutting i don't think this area would have changed much at all since before european settlement Glorious huge trees here outside the school. In 1889, Ormiston train station opened, though it was closed between 1960 and 1987, as was the line from Lota to Cleveland. I'm now just coming up to the location of what used to be Berinia train station. 
Ormiston train station's further up that way, but there was another station just down there. Marinia train station opened in 1937 and it closed in 1960. The station was only for passengers, it wasn't goods or freight. And it would have been, yeah, just down, just down that way there. There are a number of little train stations along the Cleveland line. There was a Raby Bay train station as well. And there was another Cleveland station also. I don't remember the name of it. This map may help. The line was reopened in 1982. Right, and I'm going the wrong way. Just come across an old industrial site. It looks like an old factory. And there's uh, some writing on the door there. Ring bells. Together or him. Entry to factory. Wow. Daffodil margarine. British table blend. Wow. And there's a very big piece of rusty guttering that looks like it's about to fall down on my head. And I've just come around the corner and it seems like there's another business here next to the margarine factory. And there's a sign over there saying, it's very faded. It looks like well done mech repairs. So I guess some kind of um, garage. Very awesome view of Raby Bay. There's Cleveland Point and I can see the little lighthouse up near the end of Cleveland Point. Cool. Wow. It wasn't until well into the 1970s and early 1980s that residential development got underway in the area. Um, to the staff of Ormiston House, I'm really sorry I couldn't resist. I had to take some video inside the house. It was just too beautiful not to, so I really apologise. Thanks very much for watching. Please consider hitting that subscribe button. It really does help the channel, and I'll see you again on my next adventure.